Welcome to another episode of the Always Do Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Nickel, and we are talking about cold exposure and why you need to get chilly out there. But first, before we do that, take a moment with me. What are you grateful for? What are you grateful for? We all need a gratitude practice in our life time and time and time again. The more I research, the more I learn, the more I improve myself. Gratitude practice comes up time and time and time again by everybody, everybody, even the richest of the rich, the people at the top, they're all saying the same thing over and over. Be grateful for what you have. And in doing so, it allows you to open up space for getting the things that you want. It's just so clear time and time again. And even I'm working on this is just, we focus on what we want. Well, what do I want? What do I want? How do I get it? What do I want? But why not try something different if it hasn't been working for you? Okay, quote of the day. This will get us right into what we're going to talk about. And this comes from Andrew Huberman. And it goes, quote, by forcing yourself to embrace the stress of cold exposure as a meaningful self-directed challenge, i.e. stressor, you exert what is called top-down control over deeper brain centers that regulate reflexive states. This top-down control process involves your prefrontal cortex, an area of your brain involved in planning and suppressing impulsivity. That top-down control is the basis of what people refer to when they talk about resilience and grit. Importantly, it is a skill that carries over to situations outside of the deliberate cold environment, allowing you to cope better and maintain a calm, clear mind when confronted with real world stressors. In other words, deliberate cold exposure is great training for the mind, end quote. Now, I think this is just fascinating. This is the whole episode. That right there is at least my point of view, everyone's talking about cold exposure now for weight loss, which I think is very minimal and not enough research and debatable. Brown fat activation, mitochondrial cell processes, immune boosting stuff, all this great stuff. I just continue to focus on this top down control. For me personally, I wasn't great at taking action. I was brutal at it. I would think about it. I was great at thinking about it, at starting the business, at, you know, reading the book, at taking a walk, at I'm going to exercise. I was great at thinking about it, but I didn't have that control. And this is what the cold exposure has done for me, is that you just get in. Of course, there is the control to decide to get in, but when you do it enough times, it's hard to explain, but when you do it enough times, even though it's so hard, you still almost look forward to it in a way. And again, this isn't for everybody, um, but it's worth it. It's really worth trying to stick it out for a little bit. And again, I know this is trendy and lots of people and influencers are sharing this, but just forget about all that. Forget about even what I'm talking about. Just focus on you trying a hard thing. And this is for me, again, the easiest way to do it. It's at your house. It's personal. You get to just do it. You can yell and shout if you want. You know, you don't have to do it in front of anybody. Like other hard things, that, like I recommend like getting on, go trying an open mic somewhere. That's terrifying because you have to do it in front of people. Maybe do hard things where you can just do them on your own, you know, and you can go at your own pace. You can get a toe in there or something. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, so brown fat activation, mitochondrial function, the energy of um, the powerhouse of the body, those things, metabolic rate, maybe weight loss, immune function, um, building resilience and grit, all those things, nice to keep in the back of your mind, but not necessary. And then just to reference the book in Dopamine Nation by Anna Lemke, she mentions when we do something so stressful and hard for our bodies that our bodies have to go back. So let's say it's a seesaw, right? And it tilts in one direction in the bad direction. Like, ah, this is hard. It's so cold. Oh, I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. And then once you stop it, your body has to go back to the flat seesaw. But here's the cool part. Before it can do this, I got my hand in front of my face. Before it can do that, it must tilt even further to the good side before it levels out. So you can't see my hand, but it's going all the way down to the left. Ah, cold, 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 cold. Then it's coming back. Whoa, 
all the way back to the right, and then it's leveling out. So you get this huge, you do this really hard thing, and then for it's apparently hours afterwards, you get this huge hit of like goodness. So again, try to take it in the morning. It's up to you. It's supposed to produce feel-good chemicals, you know, those oxytocins and dopamines we hear about all the time something to look into and something to try. It is, I wrote here in my notes, it's not nearly as cold as you think. And I realized that these notes were taken a while ago and I lied to myself. It is very cold. It really is. Almost every time, every single time, which is mind blowing. I was like, oh, this will get easier. Um, today was easier, but some days are really, really, really hard. And even when I I do things in the morning and like meditate and exercise in the morning, when I'm meditating, I'm thinking like, oh God, I do a cold shower. So I'm not going to lie to you. It's not easy, but is it worth trying? The mental aspect is really something interesting to check out. I'll leave it at that. I've got a little bit more here on the science. I'll read it out because I've got it here. And I think that's exciting stuff. It's just from a study, and it just says the following evidence appears to support the hypothesis, the hypothesis that exposure to cold is known to activate the sympathetic nervous system and increase the blood level of beta endorphin and noradrenaline, and to increase synaptic release of noradrenaline in the brain itself. So I won't go into all the details, but in conclusion, wider and more rigorous studies would be needed to test the validity of this hypothesis. So we kind of know, but we don't really know a lot for sure. But it seems like more and more research is coming out and people are sharing their personal experiences. And again, just especially now that it's warming up a little bit, it gets much easier um, to do it as opposed to doing it in the winter. But again, I highly recommend it if you want to do something really difficult and give it a try. And I mentioned these two, if you just do it once, it's not going to be great. It took a while. This one, I'm, I'm being honest. It took a while again, it still stinks, but it's now a, a stink that I look forward to. If that makes sense. I look forward to going through the struggle because I know it makes me feel good. But again, it took a very long time to get to that point. Always do and have your absolute best day.